Good morning, good evening, good night, everybody. This is Anthony, and today we are going to make a website, run a tutorial for that website for Gmail API access. So let's break that down a little bit more. If you want to have a website where you can read into your emails and display that information, run filters, do cron jobs, whatever you want to do, then this is a tutorial for you. And we're actually going to do the quick start in this episode and then after that we're going to start doing we're going to kind of modify the code to make it a little bit cooler so starting at the google homepage, go to console developer google and if you've ever wanted to access your emails from an outside source like an app or a website then uh, this is a cool and easy way to do it for the first time go to this page that just showed up and if you've never been here let's not worry about access forbidden right now then you want to create a project. So select a project. Click this down arrow and do new project. Um, apparently, we will call it YoYo and we will create it. So this is our project. YoYo. YoYo. Now think about that. Now while that's loading, let's let that load. I will go over to some things that you need to have. You need to have a text editor of choice. You need to have a an SSH shell open, you need to have FileZilla. And that should be about it for the stuff on your computer. Cool, now the project is loaded. You wanna make sure that it says your project name up at the top, so mine is YoYo. We want to use the Gmail API. So again, if you've never used this, then every single library, so click on library, you can see all these libraries are here listed Depending, on, depending upon what you want to do, that is the library you will click. So you can see Gmail API is there. Let's say you can't find it too well, so you type in GM. Just start typing it as in like General Motors, right? There it is. Click Gmail API. Now you want to enable it. Every project that you create is going to have nothing associated with it. There will be no APIs. So you'll want to enable them one at a time and make them work one at a time. So Gmail is what we're using. We will click Enable. And then after we do that, it'll take us to the this nice little dashboard. And honestly, I don't want to be here. I want to do a tutorial. So I want to go back to where I was at by clicking Google APIs again. And Library again. All right, let me get comfortable. Let's type in GM again for Gmail. And let's go right back to the page we were just at. Now, after I go here, you will see, if you scroll down, it says Tutorials and Documentation. Learn more. Well, let's learn. That's what this is about, right? References, you don't really want to play with that your first time around because that is going to be code snippets. And code snippets are great if you have an entire program, but if you don't, then you'll need to know how to build the entire program. Samples are cool. That's uh, got some pretty cool stuff in it, but we're not going to do that today. Guides is what we're going to do, and specifically the Quick Start PHP. The uh, browser is what we did before with like Google Sheets and Calendar, but we're going to do PHP today, and you can see there's other languages that are options as well. So we're going to run through this tutorial. So if you're doing this now by yourself, then watch the video and do it with me, and then we will start changing the code to make it do other things. So starting at the beginning, we want to have PHP 5.4 or greater. You want to have Composer installed. I'm going to assume that you do because of uh, the prerequisite, but if you don't, then just go to the page, download it, uh, or click download, and then copy this into your file structure in your web server and run it, and then you will have Composer. And that will allow you to run the Composer command. Next, Google, Google account with Gmail enabled. All right, cool. So step one, this is where we actually are going to break it down a little bit. I would recommend not clicking enable the Gmail API and running through that because number one, well, we already did it at the beginning of the video. And number two, it won't really teach you how to navigate through this page here. And we want to learn how to do that. So what are we trying to accomplish? That's always the key question. Well, we want to en enable Gmail to use, to access my, my account through this application. We've done that. We want to download a configuration file and call it credentials.json. Now that configuration file can be found by going to credentials, create credentials, OAuth client ID. And 
Okay, so the first time you do this, it says you must set up a product name on the consent screen. So let's do that. Configure consent screen, and that's this, application name. So let's give it a name. Let's just call it Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo. And then once that is done, you'll tab out of it, and you can see that you can save now. Um, but we don't want to do that yet. We also want to give do an authorized domain. So this is going to protect you and your users by only allowing the applications that authenticate using OAuth to use auth uh, authorized domains. Now I pretty much just read that, right? But here's what that actually means. If you've got a website that has code in it that accesses, accesses your email, Google wants to know which website is that. You don't want any email, or I'm sorry, any website to be able to access your email. That would be bad. So my website is Brunstar. Dot com and I want to click tab and make sure you click tab after all of these because that's the way it saves it. It's actually using um, I don't know probably Ajax or something to save it. And then you click save. Once that is done, now look at this. I still can't click anything. It's it's dumb. So I'm gonna click uh, configure. Yeah, let's go back to the configure consent screen and then we'll go to credentials here. So that's kind of silly, but we're literally going into a circle, but it's because Google hasn't figured out how to make that easy for us yet. So back to where we started, OAuth client ID. Now we are at the same page, we're not getting that error, and we can click web application, cool. Name, let's call this a uh, yo-yo, tab. Now the authorized redirect URI is important because after a screen pops up and says, I would like to access your email, you're gonna click yes. Once you click yes, then it's going to redirect you somewhere and you have to tell it where to go in your project. So we're gonna do tutorials.dev.brunstar.com and this, and then you wanna click tab again because that'll save it there. This, brunstar.com is important because remember in the previous screen, we said brunstar.com was an authorized host. Now, authorized JavaScript origin, you only need to worry about that if you're using JavaScript. We're using PHP today, so we're not really gonna worry about that right now. We may come back later, but who knows. Then click Create. Now you've got your OAuth client with a client ID and a client secret, ooh, and you can download the configuration file. So this is the configuration file that is being discussed in this step of the tutorial, and we're doing it the legit way, like I know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna click save, open folder, and then I'm gonna put it into my file structure, which I've already got here. I've got one called Dev Tutorial Gmail. So I'm gonna move it over here. And if you recall, they said that you should call it credentials.json. You can call it what you want, but that's what I'm gonna call it because that's what the tutorial tells me to call it. And next is the step two, install the Google Client Library. I'm having a hard time saying Google, Google, Google. All right, so to do that, it says run Composer. So I will do that. I will run Composer. This is what I installed earlier in the tutorial. Of course, you've got that. And then you will do require Google API client colon hat 2.0. Now, I'm going to let that run. And while that is running, let's first take a look at our FileZilla. You can see that in this Folder. All I've got is a CGI bin and a complete. That's it. I don't have anything else. In a moment, I'm going to have a vendor folder after this is done. That vendor folder is going to have a bunch of cool stuff in it, like functions, methods, classes, that I can call and use to access my Gmail account. Step three, create a file named quickstart.php. So I'm not going to call it that. I'm going to call it index.php because I'm stubborn, but it really doesn't matter. Hopefully you will know why we call it index.php. If you do know, drop a comment below and explain to our users who don't why you would call it index.php. All right, index.php, we're going to highlight all the code. We're going to copy and we are going to paste into our text file and then we're going to save it and then it says, let's make sure we did everything here. Yep. Run the sample. Are you serious? Is it that easy just to copy and paste code and I don't need to know what it does? Hmm, I guess. 
it's okay. Bear with me. In the next episode, I'll explain a little bit more about this code. We'll break it down, and we will not only break it down, but we'll change it to make it do cooler stuff. It says run it in the command line running by running php quickstart.php. Well, what are we going to run instead? Bingo, index.php. So let's go back to our SSH. You can see all this is done. Um, and if I go to this and I refresh, I've got hopefully new, yep, I've got my vendor folder there. And now I can run php index.php, enter. It says it could not open the file. And why is that? Well, because I didn't put it on my server. So let's go back and let's put it on the server. Index.php, credentials.json, bam, moved. Let's ls to see that it's there. Index and credentials, and let's try that again. All right, so now what does it say? It says the first time you run the sample, it will prompt you to authorize access. Browse to the provided URL, which is right here, https colon slash slash blah, 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 all the way down to here. And then place it in your browser. Hmm. Let's do that. Paste it in my browser. Boom. And look, it says choose an account, brunstar.com. That's where I want to do. Yep, yep, I want to choose my account. It says it's not verified. That's okay. Click advanced. Go to brunstar.com. Yep. And allow. And make sure you trust it. Yep, I definitely trust myself. And oh my gosh, HTTP 500 error. It's okay. Don't worry about it. We don't care about this right now. This is what we're going to prevent in the future. But look at here. We've got this code. This is what we care about. Code. We're going to highlight all the way up to where it says right before the and because between each variable up there, we've got an and. So it's this and that and that and scope. So we've copied the code. You can see where it says enter verification code. We will paste the code and hit enter. And sure enough, it has read my email and listed all the categories that I have in my email account. I've got personal category, apartments, category, forums, receipts, apartment, blah, 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 blah. That is literally all of this stuff off to the left here. All of this stuff, all of that is here. So that is the quick start tutorial. Congratulations, you have completed it. In the next episode, we are not only going to uh, break this down, we're going to change it so that I can not only like read the email, read the labels, I can read the emails, I can display them in HTML, in my website, etc. It's going to get funner. So uh, like, subscribe, we're going to post the next video. And that is all for today. Questions below? Let me know. Thank you. Bye-bye.